With so many villainous characters in fiction, it's inevitable that some of their names, personalities, gimmicks, and appearances will be similar to others. There are only so many different ways to be evil, after all. That being said, you'll probably be surprised at just how many creators ripped off their characters and real-life people when it came to conceiving some of these well-known bad guys. Some of the most iconic evildoers ever to appear in your favorite stories were actually blatantly stolen from other sources, both real and fictional. And this video is going to run you through just a few of them. Here are 10 superhero villains who stole people's identities. By the way, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join the notification squad to make sure that you're always up to date with our great new videos. And before we start, can you guess these movies from these emojis? Stay tuned for the answer at the end of our video. Fine. I'll do it myself. Thanos. Thanos is one of the most powerful villains in Marvel Comics and is now the big bad in the hugely popular Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, he was actually based on a prominent DC villain, and it's not the one you might think. A lot of people believe that Jim Starlin took influence from Darkseid to create Marvel's Mad Titan, but it was actually another member of the New Gods that influenced his creation, none other than Metron. Thanos sits in a chair just like Metron does, and although Starlin did beef him up to be more monstrous in his appearance like Darkseid, Darkseed is, it was indeed the lesser known DC villain who initially inspired the writer come artist. To overcome fear and destroy evil wherever it may hide. Sinestro. Sinestro is one of DC's most terrifying villains. His powers are fueled by fear, after all. So it may come as a surprise to you to learn that his physical appearance is based on someone from the real world who was less than terrifying, to say the least. That man was the late David Niven, an English actor and novelist who passed away in 1983. Niven was the quintessential British cad, but he was far from evil and terrifying, yet his unmistakable pencil mustache and widow's peak hairline are clear to see when you look at the leader of DC's Sinestro Corps. Do what you were made for. Magneto. To look at Magneto, you certainly wouldn't immediately think that his creation was inspired by the men who actually inspired it. But when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. The men in question were Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., both of whom fought for civil and human rights, particularly for the black population. And Magneto does exactly that on behalf of his fellow mutants, albeit in a different way. In the Marvel Universe, the likes of William Stryker and Bolivar Trask represent the oppressive forces that Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. took a stand against, and the parallels between the pair and Magneto are clear to see. Mo Dak. We now come to the most obscure character on this list, and he's actually an alternate version of the classic Marvel villain, Modoc. This version of the character exists in the pages of Spider-Gwen, which takes place on Marvel's Earth-65. Instead of standing for a mental organism designed only for killing, Modak is an acronym for mental organism designed as America's King, and he's based on none other than America's current president, Donald J. Trump. And you only have to look at him to see the obvious inspiration taken from the business businessman come politician. You rise, only to fall. Ultron. Ultron has always been a popular villain, but never more so than now, following his portrayal by James Spader in 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron. It will probably shock you to learn, therefore, that he's actually copied from a very obscure character in an equally obscure and very dated TV show and comic book from many years ago. In the late 1940s and early mid-1950s, Captain Video and his Video Rangers aired on the Dumont Television Network. This was soon followed by a comic based on the show, which was published by Fawcett Comics. Marvel writer Roy Thomas and artist John Buscema admitted basing Ultron on the villainous Meccano from the franchise, a character so obscure that there are barely any images of him anywhere. Then I will break you. Bane. Now, this entry is a little different because in this case, we're specifically talking about Tom Hardy's live action version of Bane from 2012's The Dark Knight Rises movie, as opposed to the comic book version of the character. Hardy based Bane's voice, accent, and some of his physical traits on a man named Bartley Gorman, who is the self proclaimed king of the gypsies, a bare knuckle boxer and an Irish traveler. You can clearly tell where Hardy lifted some of the Bane persona from. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Darth Vader. Okay, so Darth Vader isn't a villain to any characters who typically get labeled as superheroes, but to many, that's exactly what Luke Skywalker is. Moreover, Vader has appeared in comic books as well as movies and other media, so we feel happy to include him here. Vader was based on both Marvel's Doctor Doom and DC's Darkseid. Like Doom, he is scarred, wears a mask and armor, and has D and V in his name. And like Darkseid, he is a warlord, one who operates on the dark side of the Force, no less. George Lucas is a huge comic book fan, as evidenced by his 1980s 
1986 Howard the Duck movie, and has credited both of these iconic villains as being his inspiration for the iconic Lord Vader, Clayface. Classically, Clayface is the name of the Batman villain otherwise known as Basil Carlo. Originally just a scorned actor in a mask, he went on to obtain a malleable clay-like body that gave him superhero physical attributes and enabled him to shapeshift. Inspiration for the character actually came from three real-life actors. He was based on Lon Chaney, who was famously known as the Man of a Thousand Faces, while his name was a combination of fellow actors Basil Rathbone and Boris Karloff. Hands up high! Hey, I'm cooperating, all right? This is me being cool. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is such a quirky and unique individual that it's hard to imagine anyone in the real world being an inspiration for her creation, but someone actually was! The person in question is actress Arlene Sorkin, and she even went on to voice the character in the DC animated universe. Sorkin is a friend of Paul Dini, one of Harley's creators along with Bruce Timm, and both her personality and name went partially towards creating the iconic character. Partially is the key word there because you have to assume that Sorkin isn't quite as crazy as the Joker certified insane girlfriend. Never start with the head. The victim gets all fuzzy. He can't feel the neck. See? The Joker. We finish with a two-fold entry now, as this entry specifies the influence behind both the comic book version of the Joker and the most iconic live-action movie version of the Joker. The story goes that a 17-year-old named Jerry Robinson showed DC Comics writer Bill Finger a Joker playing card he'd drawn up from memory. Finger then suggested they supplement this sinister clown with the creepy permanent grin featured in a silent movie called The Man Who Laughs, a movie in which Conrad Veidt played a man whose face had been disfigured so it it looks like he's grinning from ear to ear. The resemblance to the Joker is undoubtedly uncanny, so he's not as original as some people might think. Finally, we come to Heath Ledger's version of the character from 2008's The Dark Knight. The Oscar-winning portrayal took influence from a number of sources. Ledger's voice and mannerisms were mainly inspired by musician and actor Tom Waits, but Ledger also took influence from musician Sid Vicious and actor Malcolm McDowell's portrayal of Alex DeLarge in A Clockwork Orange. Thanks for watching our video about 10 superhero villains who stole people's identity without asking. That's all for today. Make sure you leave us a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more fun videos every day of the week.